So we're planting out this yard with a native landscape and first we have to get rid of all of this grass. Of all of the ways to get rid of grass, cutting sod is definitely the fastest. So if you're looking for a quick flip this spring of lawn to native landscape, you're gonna wanna go and rent a sod cutter. We went ahead and rented a sod cutter, ran it across this entire lawn and now we are doing the somewhat arduous task of hauling all of the sod over to a tarp. But then all we're gonna have to do is spread a bunch of compost and plant the amazing grouping of native plants that we have planned directly in here. Then we're gonna put down just a really great natural wood mulch after. And that's it. That's why I'm covered in dirt. So if you're curious about how this whole process goes, let's show it from the beginning. Action. Not in the back. Now the first thing you need to do is get your hands on a sod cutter. We rented ours from our local Home Depot, which was just around the corner from our friend's house. All in, it cost about $120, including the ramp. And the ramp is really important because if you don't have three brawny people ready to hoist that up and off of a truck, you need a ramp in order to drive it up and down whatever vehicle you use to get this over to your house. Very important, do not leave Home Depot without a ramp. Now the basic instructions on how to set up your sod cutter will vary a little depending on the brand you use, but one of the most important things is to set the correct depth. We went down to two and a half inches right around the edges of all of the hardscapes. So around the sidewalk, the driveway, the pathways. That way we knew we had enough depth where we could build up compost and mulch later without that debris spreading out into the hardscape. As you can see, a lot of the sod, especially around the edges, was really weak and patchy here. So the roots actually weren't strong enough to effectively roll the sod. And in general, we just sort of had to scoop up these big, heavy patches of sod and dirt and put them into a wheelbarrow. We had a sod cutter that could go down to two and a half inches, although a cheaper sod cutter can go down to two and that is just fine. It is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. And remember when I said that the sod cutter was really heavy? Well, it's also heavy to push. So just come prepared to put your back into it. Push that thing back and forth. Take breaks if you need to, it'll be just fine. Something else that you should also keep in mind is that it vibrates quite heavily and therefore will tear up your hands a little bit if you're not wearing gloves. So if you don't have a sturdy pair of work gloves to do this with, I'd recommend picking some up at Home Depot or Lowe's while you're picking up the sod cutter because you don't want the blisters that you will get on your hands if you don't wear gloves, I promise. We eventually fell into a groove where we would sod cut one strip of grass and then I would go in with a shovel and edge out a little square using the tip of the shovel and then we could just go ahead and shovel a little square directly into the wheelbarrow rather than trying to roll all of the sod by hand. Again, it really depends on how your sod reacts to rolling and or cutting. It's very, very hard to give blanket advice here because all sod is in varying conditions and will react differently depending on how wet it is, how heavy it is and so on. I think consults are open in June and then like, so if you want it done this year or next year, it would still be good to like get it, get it rolling. That being said, removing sod down to that two and a half inch depth was significantly more of a pain than down to a one inch depth, which we did for the rest of the yard. So definitely use your judgment here and go down as deep as you need to and no further because otherwise it's just, it's just a headache. I, I, that's what it, you don't want to do it unless you have to. A couple things will determine how fast this will go and how easy it is for you. Number one, the depth that you set it to. If you set it to a lighter depth, like two inches or one and a half inches or one inch, this is going to be exponentially faster and easier. However, if you determine that you need the extra depth, maybe because of the depth of your roots or the condition of your sod, or you just want extra space to maybe layer on some more organic material, it is going to take a while. So pace yourself, don't try to rush, don't try to do this in one afternoon, especially if you are only one person. Give yourself time, it's okay. The other thing that's gonna determine how fast and easy this is for you is how many roots there are under your soil. This property had a lot of decaying roots because there was a tree that unfortunately fell during a windstorm and was no longer there, but all of the roots were still there and in the very early stages of decay. So these were large, difficult roots that the sod cutter had to power through sometimes, and that was rough. It required keeping a steady hand on the 
the handle, putting a lot of strength into pushing the sod cutter, and also dealing with that vibration every time the sod cutter met resistance. So again, please make sure you're wearing some really sturdy work gloves and be ready to work. Be ready to do a little bit of manual labor. And while we're at it, for the love of God, please wear sunscreen, hydrate, drink lots of water, take care of yourself, okay? Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was this gorgeous native landscape. So please, please do as we did, order tacos to go, have an endless supply of coffee and a thermos and lots of water, bring all your best friends around, play some music, try not to make this more miserable than it is, is really what I'm trying to say. Make it an experience. Is that, whoa. Is that... Whoa. Take turns, hydrate, pace yourself. You can do it. <laughs> we can do this, it's fine. So clearly this is a significant amount of sod and it would be sort of a bummer to have it hauled off to the landfill. So if you have the capability, you can actually compost this by adding a bunch of leaf mulch, the winter clippings from any of your dormant perennial shrubs from this year. You could order a chip drop and put down wood chips from that and, and mix that. That carbon to nitrogen ratio would convert this to amazing garden soil that you could put throughout your entire yard in about a season or maybe a year. And that is a lot better than just putting this in the trash. So that's probably what I would recommend doing if you have the space. If you have a side yard you aren't using, you could easily use some pallets to rig up like a four or a six bin compost system and just get this filled in with a lot of carbon content. Free dirt. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. <laughs> About halfway through this project, I think everyone involved was starting to have some serious regrets. Again, it's it's not easy. I think the whole process looks fairly straightforward, especially when you watch those satisfying sped up videos on YouTube or whatever, but it was hard. It took several of us half a day of genuinely hard work, especially when it came time to roll the sod and lift it into the wheelbarrow and push the wheelbarrow and empty the wheelbarrow and walk back and forth. By the end of this project, all of us were many thousands of steps in. We had quaky muscles and sore backs. And if that doesn't sound like a good time to you, we can definitely evaluate some of the simpler and lower impact ways to transform your lawn this summer. I love that we have a gym at home. <laughs> Looking back now though, after, you know, the trauma of the manual labor has faded, it was worth it to us because all in cost was about 150 bucks, including the sod cud rental and the ramp. And at the end of the day, that means more money is freed up to put amazing things into this landscape. Very good, very good. Look at that technique. For reference, we had three people and sometimes four people when our friend Lee came out from behind the camera to help us working on this project for about four straight hours. And while we were doing it, it was really hard work and we definitely considered maybe we should have hired out this project for my friend instead of doing it for her. While we were doing it, it definitely felt like a lot of work. We did have some regrets, but all in all, it was half a day's work. We survived and so can you. If you were doing it with one or two people, I would definitely block out an entire weekend, especially if your yard is bigger than this one. So we got all of this sod cleared and then we're going to get a nice thick layer of compost and an unscreened natural wood mulch down. If you want to put down a dyed mulch for aesthetics, you can do that on top, but I would recommend using a natural untreated wood mulch right on top of that compost because that's what's gonna have all of that really yummy microbial activity, the beneficial fungi, the beneficial bacteria. So aesthetic landscaping mulch has been heated and treated and dyed and it really has no benefit other than looks. After that, we're gonna plant in a gorgeous natural native landscape. There's gonna be lots of little blue stem, blue grandma, aster, yarrow, penstemon. And eventually that's gonna fill in all the way so that there's very little exposed soil. It's gonna shade the soil, keep the temperature cooler. They're gonna need to water a lot less. They're gonna need to weed a lot less. So like the next month, it's important to stay on top of weeding because this would qualify as a soil disturbance and an onslaught of weeds always comes in whenever soil is disturbed. It's like the first stage in ecosystem succession. So after this native landscape is planted, we're gonna want to really be vigilant about hand and weeding it for probably about six weeks, maybe even two or three months before those plants really have an opportunity to fill in throughout the summer. But by next season, definitely, it'll be where we want it to be. We're gonna come back and check it out. So you 
got quoted by a landscaper to do all of this work for about eight hundred dollars, or yeah, was it a thousand dollars? He said that, I and mean, that was a discount because I've used him for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He said it would be more like a thousand to twelve hundred. Yeah. So doing this, I mean, this was a ton of work. It was a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, with four people putting in, but with four people, it took us four hours. Less than four hours. Yep. Um, and the physical costs were less than 150 bucks. Yep. It was just our So it's like 10% yeah. or, you know, less than 20% of the cost of actually hiring it out. Right. And a couple of people could do this in, like, you could do it with two people. Weekend. Yeah. In, in a weekend or yeah. a day. Yeah. So while, yeah, while we were doing it, I was thinking it was worth paying the For landscaper sure. to do but, it. But, like, if you have a cost of... Like, it reduces those barriers of entry. If you know you want to do it, yep. knowing that you're going to dedicate a weekend to, like, this hard work, yep. is worth it. Like, I, this is worth the hard work in the long run, yep. right, if you don't have... And, and you're going to put several dozen plants here. I mean, it could be close to 100 plants once we have everything. Right. it's still going to cost and it's, a bunch. And it's going to, you know, those plants are 7 to 10 bucks each, so you're looking at 800 bucks in plant costs that right. we just avoided by doing this labor ourselves. How much do you think though that I'm saving in water costs? What was your lawn bill before? I mean for both the back and the front and the garden beds it like more than 200 during yeah. the summer months. I think by the time we get especially we do we convert your backyard we, that becomes the native meadow this becomes the the native perennial landscape you're going to be well under a hundred dollars a month so, I mean, in water costs. A huge amount of savings. Yeah. And never mind the fact that, like, that's just the financial savings. It's the, like, feel-good savings, too. Yeah. Like, it's not responsible to use that much water nope. in Utah. Yeah. It's great. We did it. Just Yay. in time for the rain to start. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The rain. <laughs>